Imagine the lands of your clan were threatened, handed over to another. The lands of your ancestors, the lands of your children, and by the commission of fire and sword, would you accept rule or would you stand by your kinsmen, stand for your honour? The Battle of Mulroy is seen by some as the last clan battle of Scotland, but can it truly be called a clan battle with the government's involvement? The Macdonalds of Kepok held their lands for 300 years and to understand the Macintosh's claim we have to go back to the 1400s, to the rule of King James I, for some the lawmaker, for others the tyrant. King James I, son of King Robert III, was threatened for his life as a young boy. His elder brother had suspiciously died while staying with his uncle in Falkland and in an attempt to keep the young prince safe it was arranged for him to be sent to France for education. En route, the prince was kidnapped and held hostage by the one and only King Henry IV of England. You see, Robert III was an ill man, and he died when James was just a young boy. So the rightful heir to the Scottish crown was being raised by the King of England. Henry IV died and Henry V replaced him. And the relations between the young Scots King and the old enemy would be secured even further when he was married to the Earl of Somerset's daughter, Jean Beaufort just before his return to Scotland in 1424. From the start, he really wasn't a very popular king. Having already fought alongside Henry V in France against the Scottish force, and upon his return to the Bonnie Land, he instantly started raising taxes and demanding respect for the clansmen. The two of them didn't really go hand in hand now, did they? Well, the Macdonalds, whose clan chief held the title of Lord of the Isles, kind of seen themselves as equals with the king and they'd built up tensions with the Scottish Crown for centuries. Well, James I knew it was absolutely essential that he had to break the power of this influential clan. So he summoned Alexander, Lord of the Isles, to his court in Inverness, along with other clan chiefs. Alexander was held prisoner for about a year, but his uncle was quite an influential man and he managed to negotiate the release of the young lord. But Alexander MacDonald, a man that was known to be born to much trouble all his lifetime. Do you think he was just going to accept the king's rule? And whatever he could do, he could just chuck him in prison whenever he feels like it. Come take my land if you want. Of course no. So what did the Lord of the Isles do? He gathered his soldiers. He gathered his clansmen. From the Macdonalds, the Macintoshes, the Camerons. It was said to be 10,000 men strong that he returned to Inverness and he set the entire city ablaze, but for some reason he couldn't capture the town. Well, the clansmen eventually had to return back to their own lands. The king sent his soldiers out on pursuit and they met somewhere here in Lochaber. The exact location of the battle, we, we can't be sure. But the battle would be extremely significant as the Camerons would be separated in their allegiances with the McMartin Camerons along with the Macintoshes of Clan Chatton that would switch sides and betray Alexander and end up fighting for the king. Well, Alexander, he managed to escape and return back to the islands. The king granted the Macintoshes the lands of his uncle and the lands of Kepok in the lands of Lochaber. Alexander was eventually caught and imprisoned in Tantalan Castle, which is at the other side of the country from here. And with Alexander out of the way, King James started off by separating his lands up and handing out to royalists, as well as even arranging the marriage of Alexander's daughter, which proved not to be very popular with the Lordship of the Isles. Well, Alistair Carrick was in fact the first chief of Kepok, and his land was taken off him by Alexander Stuart. Alexander Stuart, Earl of Mar, or also known as the son of the Wolf of Badenoch decided to claim Inverlochy Castle, which is in fact Macdonald land. In response, Alexander's cousins, Donald Balak, chief of Clan Ranald, and Alistair Carrick, chief of Kepok, decided to come on the attack of Inverlochy Castle. With a series of skirmishes, with Balak's men attacking from the south, and Carrick's men attacking from high ground with their archers. The Royalists under Alexander Stuart were unable to withhold 
the attacks from the clansmen and eventually each one of them were slaughtered apart from Alexander himself. And the defeat kind of ended James I's attempts to, to break up the Lordship of the Isles and Alexander was released. Although, slowly but surely, the power of the Lordship of the Isles has with the power of the McDonald's would slowly diminish. For 300 years, the McDonald's of Kepok were known as the race of Alistair, descendants of Alistair Carrick himself, son of John of the Isles. 200 years had passed. It was the 1670s. And although the Highlands had been through endless turmoil, the land disputes between the McDonald's of Kepok and the Macintoshes had never been settled. The McDonald's would never accept the Macintoshes as their superior, as their landlord. It was their land, it was simple as that. Well, true Highlanders, true McDonald's, the Kepoks were a bunch of mischievous lads. And they thought it'd be funny to go do a wee cattle raid in the Macintoshes. So they chose the clan chief of the Macintoshes, who was also the clan chief of Clan Chatton. They chose his daughter, and they went and they robbed all their coups, basically. Lachlan Macintosh, who was the clan chief, didn't think this was very funny, but powerless to resist, all he could do was go and he tried to sue for a commission. But in the end, he came up short, and the government ignored his plea. In 1682, a young, charismatic, educated clan chief called Col MacDonald stepped into place. And Col went to the Privy Council and he tried to settle the dispute between the Macintoshes and the Kepoks. Only to find himself ending up being locked up in Inverness jail. Col was eventually released and the clans remained in peace for a good few years until Lachlan Macintosh was granted the commission of fire and sword along with the king's men to come and invade the Kepok land which he was determined to do so he was determined that they would accept him as their superior well Macintosh was backed with his allies from Clan Chatton along with about a thousand of the king's men and he made his way into Kepok when the forces arrived in Kepok Macintosh ordered a fort to be built just, just, just down the hill there to protect his rear and cement his claim to the land. While the fort was being built, the River Speen and the River Roy were kind of overflowing and you couldn't pass, but on the north side, the McDonald's were gathering. The McDonald's of Glencoe, Glengarry, Clan Ranald, the Camerons, the boys were gathering. The boys were preparing to defend their land and defend the rights of their ancestors. On the first week of August 1688, the rivers had finally lowered, and under the command of Captain Mackenzie, the Macintosh force crossed the rivers, only to find the McDonald's here on Mulroy. An incredible slope, which is just a perfect place for a Highland charge. All the McDonald's were occupying the high ground. Right here, I can show you. The McDonald's were occupying the high ground, and apparently, the night before the battle, the two sides exchanged shots, fired musket shots, one after another. Nobody slept, everybody stood at arms, ready for battle. I could tell you the story from written source, or we could listen to a man called Donald McBain, a young warrior who fought on the side for the government, but he left us his experience. We were no sooner in order, but there appears double our number of the McDonald's, which made us fear the worst. The McDonald's charged down the hill upon us without either shoe, stocking or bonnet, and they gave a shout and the fire began on both sides and continued for about an hour. Then they broke in upon us with their sword and their lockabout axes, seeing my captain sore wounded and a great many more with heads laying cloven on every side. A frightened, having never seen the like before, a highland man attacked me with sword and he cut through my bayonet. I clubbed my gun and gave him a stroke with it. Seeing the Highland men all around me, I took my heels and ran 30 miles before I looked behind me. Every person I saw or met I took from my enemy until I reached the garrison of Inverness. The Macdonald's tactics of using the traditional Highland charge proved too much for the government's troops and the Macintoshes to handle. And in the end, Macintosh was held captive and Mackenzie died of wounds. Well, Macintosh was forced into an agreement to hand over his lands of Kepok to accepted by the McDonald's. But in the end, a troop of the McPhersons and the Grants would come to his rescue. 
and he would eventually be released. The government strips involvement ensured that the Privy Council ordered that the lands of Kepok should be raised and every man, woman and child should be slaughtered. Fortunately the McDonald's were able to escape into the hills but they did watch their lands, their houses, their farms, their animals. They watched it all set on fire. In the end Col McDonald was a committed Jacobite, never to betray his men, never to betray his people or his clan. And he fought in the Battle of Sheriff Muir and in Killycranky. Well guys, I have no battery left. I hope I got that video completely finished. Um, both my batteries have just died because they're absolute nonsense. Um, the last ba clan battle of Scotland clearly wasn't a clan battle because if it was left up to the clans without the government's involvement, then the Macintoshes would never have been powerful enough to come and, and invade the Macdonald land. So yeah, let it be a lesson to you all. And you know, even if you're right or wrong, our ancestors, man, they were warriors. It doesn't matter, the Macintoshes were no bad clan. You know, everybody used the government to their advantage at some point in time, pretty much. But it's, you know, fair, fair game, I guess. Aye, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful evening. Beautiful night. I'm having an absolute wonderful time. I have no battery left, like I said. Um, if you want to see more nudity, if you want to buy me a new battery, go and um, buy me a brew. Cup of coffee hang, PayPal link as well if you want, you know, help me out in that. Aye.